Hello there. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over data tables and charts, getting some visualizations that are going to show off some dense data sets. Uh, when I say dense, I mean like 20 things because I don't want to really write any more than that. But you're probably going to be working with data of much larger magnitude than I have, so we're going to need to be able to handle that. Now, uh, we're going to start off with your usual starting code, uh, clearing out pretty much everything. Uh, in fact, all this can just go kaput. Uh, and we'll clear out the home for now. We're gonna write in, um, we're gonna write up a new class that's going to have the, uh, uh, give, use a widget that will show this off. And this is data tables and charts demo. Okay, so uh, what are we gonna do today? What we're going to do is we're going to make a, um, a little tiny app that is going to show off the uh, visualizations of data, both in chart form and in table form of some grades. Uh, you know, we'll just do some you know, A pluses and B minuses and so on. Uh, so we're gonna start off by needing a class for that. This is called, uh, make sure I have all my notes all lined up here, grade. Uh, and in here, we have a class called grade. And it's going to have a SID and it's going to have a capitalized for string, um, grade. Uh, I need to use string for grade because we're going to be going with things like F minus or uh, B plus or so on. I guess F minus doesn't exist, but it's okay. Uh, so constructor, nothing too complicated. Yep, 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 good stuff. Uh, we'll have it to string. And it'll return grade. SID grade. In addition to having grades, we also want to have the frequency of each grade. So we'll have an object for that. Maybe you could do this with a dictionary instead, but we'll, we'll use an object. Um, I think the reason that we might want to do this is because later we want this object to actually show up in a certain spot. So in that case, uh, it's kind of necessary to have an individual object specifically for the frequency at which a grade appears. Frequency, grade frequency, constructor, nothing new here. This. And also it's a string, which will look like this, except it will be a grade of frequency and it will have the grade and the frequency. Okay, done. Uh, nothing too fancy here. So just setting up a class that's going to have our grades and going to have the frequency at which a certain grade appears that we'll need for showing off our data later. So that's all done and good. Let's start by looking at, um, I think maybe we'll do a, uh, hmm, should we do a, frequency chart first. Um, you know, let's do a grade table first and then we can do a frequency chart after that. So let's start a new file and we're going to call it a grade table. Um, we're going to build this, um, which is going to be a, a stateful widget. So stateful widget. Are we, are we okay, Android Studio? Can you handle what I'm about to write down? Is it too intense? Analyzing. Oh man, code analysis. Still having a hard time actually starting. I'm gonna close it and open a new one. This is really just not doing anything. Okay, uh, let, me, let me try importing material. I don't know what is going on right now. It's just like being really, really slow analyzing. What do you have to analyze? There's nothing going on. <laughs> Import a uh, package flutter material. Yeah, there we go. Okay, is, are things going now? Are we finally there? There we go. Okay, boom. Um, let's get a grades table. Extends our stateful widgets. Uh, we're gonna import grade as well. Um, okay, and we are going to need to put in some variables in here because we need to have some grades we're gonna show people. So we're gonna need a list of grades that we're gonna show off. Uh, mark. 
we're going to have a list of selected grades that we'll click on. And we'll have a singular grade, which will be the one we are currently working on, editing. Uh, I think if I need more stuff, I'll write it in later. Um, now, when I initialize in its state, I need to assign some values. Uh, and specifically, I'm going to assign, uh, and I'm, I'm going to cheat here and just copy a bunch of code. Um, but effectively, what I'm doing is just putting in a list of, um, of kind of random grades with student looking numbers. Uh, just so let's say, uh, first though I need to do super dot in state so that that runs and then I will uh, do this. Uh, so this code is just assign the value to grades which to be is going to be a list of grades and each one is got a big old number and a grade. Okay, so I got my list here. Now that I have that, uh, let's also set up selected grades to be an empty list. Okay, I think there's more stuff I might need to do later, but for now, this should be good enough. Okay, now, uh, let's build our scaffold. Our scaffold is going to have an app bar. The app bar is gonna have a title. The title is going to be grades. We'll make it grades table, just to make it very explicit what we're looking at. Um, Actions, we're going to have a button and another button. Let's do these one at a time. Actually, let's not copy this until I've formatted it properly. It's a good practice to get into. There we go. And two buttons. The first one is going to have a, a delete icon. And when you press it, it is going to go into selected grades. And for each one that's there, oh, I wanted for each uh, element that's there, um, we're going to do grades.remove the grade. Why are you mad? Because this could be false. There we go, and there we go. Not false, no. Uh, okay, promise these are real. There we go. So we have, when you press the delete button, any grades that have been selected will be deleted from our list of grades. It's probably a good thing to have. Um, now, uh, this actually we'll comment out for now. This is going to take us to when we later make a uh, frequency chart. So let's do a frequency chart. Um, and we will uh, we'll put that in there when we get around to it. Um, but I need still to be able to show off these grades. Uh, and I think there's a fair bit of code we're going to have to get through before I can do that, unfortunately. Um, so where shall we begin? I think where we're going to start is with the body of the scaffold, which is going to be a data table. Data table is going to need some stuff. In my data table, I need to have um, uh, some sorting indices, I believe. Yeah, there's a sort column index and sort ascending, uh, which starts out as true. But I might want to change those. So let's actually, um, I guess I do need the, um, the oh, sort column index is not needed. Maybe I'll add that kind of thing later. There's a few parameters of the data table that you can change if you want to make it look a certain way or show off stuff in a certain way. But right now, I kind of just wanted to get it to work. And then once it works, I can worry about making things look nice and pretty. So let's start with columns. So I need to set up columns. My columns here is going to be a list of data columns. Uh, and the label for this data column is going to be the text that says SID. Um, I guess I can add more stuff to this later. Um, hmm, do I need to add anything to it right now? I don't think I do. 
No, I think this is fine. We'll we'll make this look nice and fancy later. In fact, maybe I might even just do it in class and for now just get like the core functionality. And uh, yeah, because I will mostly want to just actually see stuff up here on the screen. So data column, second one is going to have also text, which is going to be their grade. Uh, in addition to columns, I need to have rows, rows. And for rows, I need to take my grades and map each grade in them. So each grade we'll call uh, grade to a data row. And then I believe at the very end, I convert this into a list. So let's do two lists right now before I forget, because I will forget. So I need to take each of these, which are going to each be data rows, data row and then convert this whole thing into a list. Okay, so map grades to data row and let's build our data row. Uh, yes, okay, so um, yeah, what is required here? So, uh, probably I'm guessing map is angry because receiver could be null. Well, I can handle that. And then this needs to actually be some cells. So let's make some cells, which is going to be a list. And it's going to be a list of um, data cells, which is going to be, um, the first is going to be the, grade dot s s i d what did i call it yeah it should be s i d oh i think i need to um i need to type it otherwise it's not going to realize what i'm uh, what i'm trying to reference here so let's make sure it's clear this is a grade and now i can do s i d dot um to string now this whole thing's very angry this dynamic can't be assigned to the parameter type list data row. Um, this shouldn't matter, right? I think I need to type some things. I think this is just angry because I haven't typed anything and it's very mad at me. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, you know what, this is going to be a list of data cells. Um, let's see, what else can I type here that will help? Um, the whole thing is really, really mad about it. The argument type list dynamic can't be assigned the parameter type list data row. Oh, because grades is not typed, which it should be, because it should have grades. Why are you mad? Oh, I have the, what was the format for this? I uh, think if the question mark comes after, that's why it's mad. Okay, so that error is gone. That error is gone. Okay, cool. Common errors, good to see them. Um, okay, so that is, so I got my data cell that has my, um, my SID, and then I want the, uh, let's see here. So, okay, I think what we're going to do is we can show off some stuff, but I think for now we're gonna keep it simple and we'll, we'll make some changes later to make things look a little spicier, but just to get this working, I'm gonna have a data cell with text of um, the grade. Promise it's real. Why are you angry? I promise everything is real. Lots of lots of exclamation marks. Very exciting, isn't it? Okay. Um, so I think this should be sufficient to at least show off what's going on. Oh, finally, I need to uh, to bring this back to main. So I need to make a grades table in my main. This will be a grades table. 
Uh, constructor, just the thing. Import. Okay. Let's give this a shot. Uh, device manager. Open my phone. <laughs> this is, I think, the bare minimum to get a table to show up, which is where I want to start. And then from there, I can have it do more interesting things, show off more interesting things, and so on. Whew. Looks like I had to restart the whole thing, huh? Not a problem. Pixel is starting. Okay, started. Let's uh, let's give it a go. So if this works, what it should do is it should make us a little grades table that will show off the student IDs and the grades that I put in, and that's it. Um, we will start getting around to being able to change these values, being able to show off different things. Maybe after this, um, the next step we can do is we can show the frequency just to make that interesting. <clears throat> uh, and then we can move on to showing other ways of showing data. Oh, okay, what's angry? Um, Operand of null has type which excludes. Oh, because we know the grade is real, so we don't have to worry about it being potentially. Uh, no, so this grade can go away. This exclamation mark for grade can go away. Okay, stop. Oh, it's just a warning. I, I could have actually not done that. That's fine. We'll make sure the code has no warnings. That's better. We know for sure grade is not um, null because it's defined right here. This grade could be null if I was coding poorly. Hopefully the, uh, the audio is not picking up the lawn mowing of Polonsky Commons right now. <laughs> um, let me just look at what we'll do next. I think we will do the, um, the, uh, we'll do the frequency next. I think that makes sense to do. Hey, look at that, there we go. Grades, we got some grades tables. Uh, I can't seem to scroll it, that's not ideal. Um, perhaps that is a setting I can change somehow? Uh, maybe, maybe not, who knows. Um, in any case, I got my grades. So let's move on to, um, let's see, what should I do next? I think what I will do next is the frequency, just so that we have it, and then I, that that I think can be done pretty quickly and simply, and then we can uh, go back to um, to modifying this and making it so we can edit things. Because right now this delete button I don't think does anything at all, which is kind of unfortunate. So we'll get around to that. But let's start out by making ourselves a chart that shows how frequently certain grades show up. I'm going to do that by making a frequency chart. Frequency chart. Yeah. Okay. So my frequency chart here is going to also be a stateful widget. So let's import material. Let's, uh, okay. So I think for this one is where we're going to actually need pub spec because I've not added in any dependencies yet. And I do need to have one, which is called uh, charts flutter. Oh no, this is the, the scariest thing to see. Uh, charts Flutter new, uh-oh. Um, hopefully this is not a problem because you know, Flutter tends to update at times when I would prefer that it doesn't. Uh, is there another one I can use? Oh, charts Flutter new, I suppose. All right, uh, buck, buckle up everybody because uh, hopefully Charts Flutter new is not too different from Charts Flutter, which is the one I assumed. The fact that it adds new is already just kind of red flags for me, but here we go. Okay, uh, we're gonna figure this out together. Not a problem. Imp. Uh, yeah. Do a pub get, please and thank you. Uh, 
Okay. Import. Uh, charts flutter new. Come on. New slash flutter dot dart. Okay, well at least that's the right file, so that's good. Um, also to import grade, of course, because we need it. And we're making a stateful widget, and it's going to be called frequency chart. One word. Okay, uh, my frequency chart is going to have a variable of grades. Does not need to be constant. Uh, I guess it must be initialized. So we'll do this dot grades. Uh, nullable. Okay, so we got our grades. Uh, let's build a scaffold. This is going to be a page that we jump to um, using one of the buttons up here, I think. Uh, and so when we jump to this page, it should be a brand new scaffold with a brand new app bar. And the um, the title of this one is going to be uh, grade frequency. So I've got the grade frequency. Uh, we're going to have a body for the scaffold, which is going to be a container. And the container is going to have a bit of padding to space things out nicely. And gin sets. Uh, dot all ten, space it out. Uh, the child's gonna be a box. So we have a box inside of our container. The height of this box is gonna be five hundred for funsies, uh, and the child is going to be a. Um, now did I import my? Ah, so I imported this as it is. I'm gonna import this as charts. And down here, I'm going to do charts dot. Uh, I don't know what kind of bar, uh, chart do I want? Bar chart. Yeah, bar chart's fine. Um, okay, a bar chart. Inside my bar chart, the first parameter needs to be the um, actual data. So we're going to need charts dot series. Uh, and this is going to need to give us our data. Uh, I think this is in a list. Wait, one second. Uh, where it starts. Yeah, so in here is going to be the list. And inside the list is going to be our series. Kind of weird how this is set up, but apparently that's just how it is, you know? Um, oh, also, just to make things look pretty, we'll do um, animate is true and. Uh, Vertical is true, so it's not horizontal. Um, okay, charts.series. So we're going to need to get some data. Um, we're going to have an ID, which is going to be grade frequency data. We're going to have um, the domain function, which is going to. Um, now, I think we might need another. Oh no, we have uh, we have the great frequency class, right? We built one over here, so we're going to use this class um, because that is going to have the um, that's going to have the objects that are represented by our data, and from those objects, we're going to need to take the uh, grade itself and the frequency separately, and so we want to map them together. So in our domain, we're going to take a, a grade frequency, grade frequency gf. Um, and another parameter. I think it's context, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and come back with the grade frequencies grade. Uh, and why are you angry? You're angry because it could be non-existent. So yeah, nope, that's not it. Uh, what do I have to do to fix this? Um, string function. Grade frequency int can't be assigned to the parameter. Can I just do this then? Is that okay? Okay, apparently that's fine. So I have a bad feeling about this because it's. Oh, I think maybe because. Hmm. 
what is GF? GF is dynamic, but it should be um, a great frequency. Well, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't explode on me, but uh, measure function is the other side of the graph. So here, once again, we have GF and blank, and this will yield to us the great frequency. And then to have the data, we are going to have to calculate grade frequency. So right now we just have the grades themselves. We don't actually have the, um, the frequency at which a certain grade appears, right? So we need to actually figure that out. So let's make a function that will do it for us. I'm going to write it down here. Okay, that's a good spot for it. We're going to call it list grade frequency. Calculate grade frequencies. Uh, and so we're going to need a list of frequencies. I'm once again going to cheat here and I'm just going to copy and stuff so you don't see me typing for days. It's, you know, a list of it's a, a map of frequencies um, called frequencies it's a map it's gonna map from string to int and the strings are all of the grades and the ints are all zero because that's what they're gonna start out as and then for each grade in widget dot grades uh, remember that um, this is exists remember that this is going to be held by um, by this variable over here um, Frequencies of the grade dot grade um, plus plus. We can go up by one, and this grade is real. Trust me. Uh, why won't we can't plus plus? Receiver could be null. Trust me, it's not null. Really, I'm surprised. It's just angry about it. Can I do equals itself plus one? Still mad, huh? Receiver could be null. Well, I can't add a null check next to it because it's in. What if frequencies is not real? Is that the problem? No, it doesn't care. Um. Okay. Well, what if I do this the manual way? If this is not null. Really, but I, I <laughs> this is frustrating. To making the call conditional, oh, I don't want to do that. There must be a way to, to fix this. What if I wrap this in a in parentheses? Really? Illegal assignment to non-assignable expression. Oh, that's funny. Um, now are you mad? Missing a selector such as I did. Okay, well, I don't need this, presumably. Oh, receiver could be null. This is so frustrating. I know there's a way to do this. Um, the problem is the, the code that I used to do before is like not valid anymore because thanks to this null checking thing, I'm in this very annoying situation where now I have to try to figure out how to add something I know is actually going to be in here. But okay, um, so frequencies of grade dot grade is. What if I do one plus frequencies? One plus this. Still angry? The argument type int can't be assigned to the parameter num. Oh, because I haven't typed the um, the map, maybe? Argument type. Is 
<laughs> I clicked on the button to add a null check, and it just was like, oh, what if I do that? Oh, what if I do that? None of this is actually working. Thanks for the suggestion, Android Studio. Real helpful. Um, okay, what are we what are we doing here? Um, this seems like a really simple thing that shouldn't be taking me this long, but apparently, like, it's unable to. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Int. Um, frequency equals frequencies grade dot grade. That's the way it should go. Okay, so that's okay. And now can I do frequencies grade dot grade is frequency promise it's real plus one hmm okay this seems very hacky it's probably not the best way to do it but I got the errors to go away and honestly right now it's all I really care about so all right okay uh, I now have a map of these frequencies which are good so um, once again copy some code because I am uh, not interested in typing it all out so I have a list of the grades that can exist a plus to F uh, from this list I want to return um, grades.map and I'm going to be mapping for each grade a grade frequency and it's going to have the grade be the grades grade the, uh, the grade is yeah, just the grade and the frequency is frequencies of grade promise it's real no is that not the problem a type of iterable can't be returned from. Oh, I'm missing it. Oh, to list, to list. So this dot to list. There we go. Okay. Whoa, that was a that was a doozy, wasn't it? Um, but what have we done? We now have a function. Uh, oh, I, I typed the name of the function wrong. Calculate great frequencies. There we go. Um, which is going to give me the data that I need. And the data I need needs to be a list of grade frequencies. Each grade frequency object has a grade and a frequency at which it appears. So these are the things I want to actually show off. So the data should have that. There's going to be the grades themselves, which are the domain, and then the actual you know, thing I'm measuring is the frequency. And then that should show me this. Uh, now, in order to get this to actually appear, I need to put this in my grade table. Um, and what I'm going to do in my grade table here is I'm going to go back to where I have a to-do. Where's my to-do? Here it is. Um, delete that. And we're going to uncomment. Icon button. Uh, and here we're going to have an icon. Icons dot, what's this going to look like? Uh, insert chart. Well, that's fun. I just want to literally insert a chart. Uh, what happens when we press the little button? It is going to do navigator dot of context dot push uh, semicolon at the end what are we pushing we are pushing a material page route which takes a context for its builder I'm really working in a really squishy space here let's you know give myself some room huh there we go uh, give my context generate for me a frequency chart. My frequency chart um, needs to have grades, so let's give it that. Grades are going to be our grades. Very well, run. Okay, there's a little button. Click. And look at that. I guess there's a lot of Ds. Six of them. And hooray, I actually have data. Cool. Okay, uh, we've made progress. Uh, so in addition to making progress, let's go back. Um, no way to scroll this, huh? Hmm. Maybe that's a setting that I missed or something. I'm just kind of curious if there's some way to scroll it. But it might not be the case that I can't actually. Uh, it could just be the case that as I delete stuff, then I will want to do that. Okay, let's move on to, um, so right now we can, um, we can show the frequency, we can show the grades themselves. 
let's next do editing some stuff because right now we can't edit anything and that kind of sucks. So let's modify our grade table to allow us first off to select and delete things because right now we can't. Uh, so right now I want to be able to select something and I think that there is a spot to do that under the Uh, is it the, one second here, hmm. I think it's under the data cell, so my data cells are very simple. Okay, let's do this first, because this is, um, being able to edit the grades is something I can't do yet, and I would like to. So, if I want to be able to edit the grades, uh, right now I have data cells that just have the text. Um, but what I want to do, I think, is um, have my data cell show two possibilities. First off, do I have a variable to keep track of? Yeah, my editing grade. So if my editing grade is null, uh, oh, sorry, is not null, um, and the editing grade uh, is the current one, then we are going to have a text field instead of text. And the text field is going to have um, a controller. Uh, and this is going to have a, a text editing controller to allow us to actually edit this text. Uh, and the initial text here is the grade. In addition to um, having a controller for this text field so I can modify it, I also want to, when it's submitted, given a value, I want to set the grade dot grade to be the value, and I want editing grade to become null again. Uh, I think that's good. So um, there is another thing I want to change here for this data cell. Uh, now let's see. So this is the, um, let me do that. So I have my list of data cells. This is one of them. That's either going to show off a text field or it's going to show text. Uh, the text is going to show up if I'm not editing it, but if I am editing it, then I want to be able to actually change the grade. Now, right now, I'm, I don't actually have a way to set that I am editing something. So I'm going to need to have that, um, which I believe is part of the data cell. Uh, so data cell is going to be either this or this, and then one of the things that I can have is show edit icon, which is true because I want to show it, because um, I want to be able to edit it, and on tap, I want to edit that thing. So I will do um, editing grade equals grade, so now I can edit it. Um, now, I want to be able to see this happen, so I need to wrap this in set state. Set state. And I need to wrap um, changing the grade value as well, because I want to see that happen. Set state. Let's give this a shot. Okay, now I got the little editing icon next to them, and let's say I want this person to not have an F anymore. I want them to have a, is, is it editing? There we go. Uh, I want them to have a D, because apparently there's a lot of those. Submit. Now data, show me what it looks like. Look at that, now we got seven, because we had six before, right? And my one F, I think it was the only F, has been removed. Very nice, very nice. Can I delete these? Uh, if I click on this, can I delete you? Not yet. Okay, so maybe you have to um, modify my deletion right now. Um, oh, because right now my selected grades 
uh, stays empty, but I need to actually put stuff in the selected grades. So what I think I'm going to do is set that up now. Um, so where do I make it so I am selecting the grades? Let's find out. Um, let me see here. So my rows right now map grades to data rows. Ah, okay, so there's a couple things I need to add in here then. Um, in my data row, I have a few things I have not set. One of them is going to be selected, so that when I select the data row, I'm going to make that be whether or not the selected grades list contains that grade. So if I have selected it, uh, trust me, it's real, um, then it will be highlighted, and if it's not selected, it won't be highlighted. I also, when select changed, anytime I change something that's been selected, I want to, if it's selected, selected grades dot add. Um, I think it should be okay. I don't know why it's giving me this error. It's a very unusual error. Can I promise this? Okay, I'll just promise that. That's fine. I'll promise that too. Um, otherwise, we'll remove the um, grade. I essentially want to make sure that anytime I've clicked on something, I'm treating it as being selected. Anytime I click off something, I'm not treating it as being selected because I want to be able to only select certain things at a time and delete them as necessary. Let's see if this fixes my problem. Ah, we can select things now. It looks like we can select things now. Can I actually select things now? Maybe I'm missing something else. Oh, <laughs> it'd be nice to have a set state, wouldn't it? Uh, anytime anything goes wrong, you can always count on set state being the thing that you forgot to do. Select context, set state, try it again. Okay, show me. There we go, select this, select this, select this, select this, delete. Still can't delete stuff. <laughs> uh, maybe my delete is missing a set state. That's also possible. Uh, unpressed, it removes things, but does it set state? Should it be set state? It should set state, and that's why I can't see it. Let's try with set state. Hot restart. Okay, select this. Select this, select this, select this. Get out of here. Ha, ah, there we go, there we go. Okay, okay. Making progress, making progress. Really nice. I can go here, and some of those things are gone. I have fewer uh, things in my list now. Cool, okay. We're you know moving along, moving along, making stuff happen. Um, I think there's, uh, how much more left is there to do? Um, there's some things that I might leave till class. I think I want to, at the very least, get through the um, the paginated data table, which I have not done yet. So let's work on that last one. Uh, maybe maybe we'll do the whole thing. I think we have time. Sure, why not? We're here. Let's uh, let's let's polish this off and finish um, making everything that is missing from here. So right now, what's missing? Um, in terms of what's missing, I don't have sorting of any kind. Right now, everything is just in like static order, not really ideal. So let us set up our data table such that we can sort things. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna need some more variables that we haven't put in yet. We're going to need a um, sort column index because we need to know which column we're sorting by, and we're going to need to have whether or not we're sorting ascended or sorting descended boolean question mark okay um we can actually initialize these to be uh sort column index will start as zero and our sort sending will be share one out 
Okay, I got my sorting. Uh, let's do um, an on sort in my data table. So in my data table, or sorry, my data column. Um, do I do that for each? I guess I do have to do this for each. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it for one and then I'll copy it for the other one because these are very simple. Um, okay. So right now I just have my label, um, but I actually wanna add a few things in here. I want to have sort column index. Hold on, this should be belong to the data column, right? Hmm, wonder if this is gonna be a place where, uh, where that is an issue. Um, oh no, it's just here, sort, sort column index, there we go. So our column index is the one that we just made, sort ascending, sort ascending. There we go, okay. Uh, I promise it's real. Um, now, in my column here, I want to have label. I wanna have a tool tip that says student ID. I want to have uh, whether or not this is numeric is true, it is a number. Um, I want to, when it is sorted, uh, we're going to take an index and whether or not it's ascending and we are going to uh, set our sort column index to be our index, set our sort ascending to be ascending, and we are going to do grades.sort. Uh, now for grades.sort, um, we're going to give in a pair A and B we are going to, if it is ascending, uh, return a.sid.compare to b.sid. Yes. I promise sid is real, and I promise bsid is real as well. Uh, so compare to, we'll compare this to the other, and it will give a um, Negative if it is less than other, zero if they're equal, and positive if it's, it's greater. Uh, and so essentially what I want is um, I want to have this going up in order. I want A, uh, like A then B then C and so on. Alternatively, um, I will return the other way around. So this, but the A and B are flipped, B and A. Why are you angry? Uh, there we go, okay. Uh, I'm missing anything else. I don't think so. Let's see if it is happy with what I have done. Hot restart. Can I sort my SID? Oh, this looks like I can. Hmm, does not seem to be uh, taking this very nicely. Um, oh, you know what it is? <laughs> it's everyone's favorite, missed the set state. Uh, the set state here should be in on sort. So here, let's set the state. Try that again. There we go, look at that. You can actually flip the, the list of grades there, and that way I can get to the bottom without having to scroll, which apparently still doesn't work, but Hey, you know what? I guess this isn't meant to be scrolled through. That's okay. Now, uh, this all works, so let's just copy it. <laughs> Yoink. Uh, and replace the other one. And this is our grades instead of our... This is, you know, letter grade. Uh, and we are looking at grade. Grade. Grade, grade. That'll do. Hot restart. Sort by grades. Hey, look at that, all the A's up at the front. Uh, I guess technically A should come after A++, but you know, you can, if you wanna be real picky about what the actual order should be, you can always set up your own little way to compare those things. Maybe you put in a different character after the A, some like false character that uh, ends up being 
between plus and minus. I don't know. Um, but importantly, we actually can order these now and look at the data as opposed to how it was before. Now, that's cool and good. Um, do I have anything else to change here? I think not. I think we can move on at this point into our last thing that we want to do, which is um, going to be our, uh, what did I call this? Paginated grade table. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, I don't think it's going to take us too long, hopefully, uh, and we'll see how this goes. Lots of imports, first of all. Uh, we're going to import material. We're going to import um, grade table. We're going to import uh, ch frequency chart. We're going to import grade. I'm actually missing an import of a file that I haven't done yet, which I probably should do. Um, so. Uh, for this paginated grade table, I'm going to need to actually have a file that's going to contain the data um, and allow me to you know, grab what I need to make this work. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to make another file. This is a big one, I guess. <laughs> we'll see how long it takes me to do in class. This one's going to be called grade source. And grade source is going to import material. Do I need material? Yeah, I think I do and import grade. And we're going to have a class called grades data source, which is going to extend data table source. And so this is the origin for the data that I'm going to need for my um, for my uh, the paginated grade table I'm going to make in the other file. Now, I need my grades. We'll type it properly. Why not? Uh, could be null. We're going to have a constructor grades data source. Uh, oh, I missed a I missed a variable. Yes, um, we're going to need a function which um, takes a boolean called on select changed. Uh, and this is going to be something that we're going to need for um, for later. It's a, it's a secret thing we'll need for later. Don't worry, we'll get to that. Uh, I'm going to be able to set this so when we create our data source. Uh, and then I'm going to copy some code in here because it is necessary. Uh, so here's constructor. And in my constructor, uh, I need to set the grades. And I'm just copying the same thing I had from the other uh, file, which is just this big old list of numbers, random grades. Uh, it doesn't really matter where they came from. Now, uh, you're still mad because you're missing some stuff probably. Uh, get row, yeah, okay. So let's implement some of that stuff. Um, first off, get grades. Return grades. Probably important. <laughs> Um, we're going to override uh, data row, get row. This takes an index and is going to return to us a row. Uh, the grade that we're looking at is going to be the, the grade from that index, promise. The page is going to be um, index. Uh, so I think this is, um, I haven't seen this operation before. This is a typo in my notes. No, I haven't seen the operator. I want to look up what this does. My notes have the symbol in it, and I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Um, Dart this. What is this? Uh, okay, uh, new thing. Uh, division where a fractional result is converted to an integer by running. Oh, so this is this is integer division then. Okay. Sure, integer division. Why not? 
I'm usually used to it just being a single uh, slash, but I suppose Dart does not do that. It'll just suddenly give you decimals where you might not want some. So to make sure it's definitely going to be integer, we'll use integer division. Okay. Um, now, uh, we are going to return a data row. Oops, not the constructor, by index, because we have the index that we're working with. And the index is the index, and the cells that we're working with are going to be the uh, SID and the grade. So we're going to have a list, and inside is going to be a data cell that has um, text of grade.id. ID, sorry. Uh, and the other is the uh, the grade itself. Yeah, grade that grade. Okay. Um, some other things I have to override. Um, row count uh, is going to be the length of grades. The override in the selected row count is a zero, and the uh, bool get is row count approximate false. We have exactly how many rows there are, so. Okay, we have a source for data for the paginated grade table that we're going to make. Now let's put it to use. Uh, first off by importing <laughs> grade source. Then we are going to need to make a stateful widget, which is called paginated grade table. Uh, do we need any parameters for this thing? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, oh no, we need a grade source over here. Okay, so our grade data source, grades data source. Uh, yeah, it should be fine. In our initialization, uh, in its state, we're going to set our grades data source to be a instance of the class grade data source. Obviously, if you're doing this for real, you'll put in real data probably, um, but I need to at least have something here so I can work with it. Now, in my build, I'm gonna build a scaffold. A scaffold have an app bar. App bar is gonna have a title, which is going to be um, paginated grades. Why not? Uh, the uh, I think we can we can do the actions later. I suppose um, there are some ways we can interact with some stuff, but I think right now we are going to leave it as is. Um, oh, sorry, there should be a text. There we go. Um, I think I want to have just the body first, so I can actually see stuff, and then we can make things happen after. Body is a paginated data table. This is the thing we've been working towards, being able to build this. Uh, we're going to need to have some parameters in here. We need a header, um, which is just going to say you know, the grades. We need a source, which in this case is our grades data source. Fortunately, it's all done for us now. Uh, I promise it's real. And our columns are going to be a data column that is labeled SID and a data column labeled grade. Uh, now, we're going to make this in our main instead of this. So let me make this our uh, paginated grades table. Oop. Why are you mad? Uh, I should import it. Okay.
Go. Okay, um, it is overflowing because there's too much to show, but that's kind of expected. I think that's okay. I don't have to really do anything about that at the moment. Um, probably uh, I can do something to change this. Let me see. Uh, I think under here, I can do rows per page and let's say I set that to five. What will that do? There we go. Now I can just do that. This is what I was looking for. Very nice, very nice. Um, yeah, okay. So we'll, we don't want to be able to see you know, all the data and have it scroll like crazy. I think we can probably reasonably show 10. Can we squish 10 in here, you think? That's a bit too much, okay. We'll do, we'll do eight. There we go. Now I can actually you know, see some stuff. Cool and good. Okay. Now, now I have my data as pages uh, and to wrap things up just so that we have everything that we could possibly ask for. Let's put some actions in my app bar so that I can do the things that I did in the rest of the exercise. So namely, let's make our actions. We're going to make an icon button and our icon button is going to have a little icon to show us icons dot, uh, what was it? Insert chart. And when you press it, navigator dot of context dot push. We're gonna push a material page route, which given context yields a, uh, sorry, not a frequency chart. Um, oh yeah, no, yeah, we want a frequency chart. Um, this should have a, or no, it has a semicolon. In here, I need to give it to the grades, which will be the grade source dot get grades. Done. Let's, uh, let's do that first. Hot restart. Really taking advantage of that hot restart today. Uh, show me the data. Hey, there's our data. Nice. Okay. Now, uh, let's do, um, no, we'll just wrap this up with one more for fun. Oop. Same thing, except the place we're going to go to is, um, grades table. And there are no parameters this time. Uh, and the icon will be, um, Table rows. Sure. So I got my frequency table. I got here where I can go and edit things and so on and so forth. Right now, I don't think the changes will be reflected, which is something you probably need to tie into your database slash other source. Um, but this is everything I think that I want to show uh, today. And so this is the, uh, the core of what you need to get data tables and charts to work. I don't think we'll be covering it again, but it is very helpful to have any time that you do need to be modifying fields somewhere. Perhaps you have some inventory you want people to be able to change. It's nice to have a very friendly user interface that can make any changes very easily. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in class. Take care.